is home of Warren G. Harding, and that's the 29th president in the United States. In the great fulfillment, we must have a citizenship less concerned about what the government can do for it and more anxious about what it can do for the nation. Address to the Republican Convention, Chicago, June 7th, 1916. Area, and there's some really cool architecture here. Some of the houses around us. Okay, you guys ready? Come on. So this is the Warren G. Harding Presidential Library and Museum. It says, Senator Warren G. Harding, welcome home, July 5th of 1920. The things that Warren G. Harding ran on was the return to the pre-war. This would be World War One, of course. The Great War. Right, kind of like what we keep hearing of return to pre-pandemic life today. Yeah, which, not going to happen. Which doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. Pretty this is. nice columns and it says you know Warren G Harding presidential library museum. and museum <laughs> here we are at the Warren G Harding home this is just the neighborhood yeah regular neighborhood and there is the house yeah how beautiful that is I love houses with like different unique architecture like that uh, President Warren G. Harding actually did spend most of his life here in Marion, Ohio. And he actually did what's called a front porch campaign where people came to him. So the Warren G. Harding home was designated a national... Um, the Warren G. Harding home was designated a national registered national historic landmark. That was a mouthful. Harding home. Warren and Florence Harding broke ground on this home in late summer 1890 when they were engaged to be married. They were married at the foot of the staircase on July 8, 1891 and lived here full time for the next 24 years as Harding successfully ran his newspaper, elevated his political career from the state to national level. The front porch was the heart of Senator Harding's 1920 campaign, the presidential campaign. Harding usually stood on the top step to speak to thousands of people at one time without a microphone. Wow. More than 600,000 people trekked to Marion over the three-month campaign to hear the candidate address the crowds. You guys go. That's right where the president, the future president, stood when he was campaigning. Right there on the top step. It's like stained glass up there in all the windows. It looks really cool. I just think history and historical homes are really cool knowing that it was a president. Now, Warren G. Harding was only president for two years. He had a massive heart attack and pneumonia. There's another one of those stained glass windows. Whatever she's sniffing is very heckin' important. Come on, B. Nope, she won't come. No! This is very important. Am says very important things to do. Sheesh. So this was the Pratt's house. <laughs> oh wow. Built over two days time in July 1920, this cottage was workspace for the approximately 17 journalists writing about Warren Harding's front porch campaign for their respective newspapers and wire services. Built over two days, still standing. What do you think, Bay? Could you build a house in two days? I'm go, sure go ahead. The, the quality of their craft in wood and the amount of bodies they probably threw at it was quite substantial. I had imagined there was probably 50, 60 guys working pretty much 24 hours straight. You know, 48 hours straight. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of ornate, but it's got a little bit of, like, you'd decoration be, to it. You'd be surprised how much of that stuff was just automatic. Yeah, it's true. It's pretty, though. It's cool that it was starting up in two freaking days. So we are looking at, right now, the Century Guard House. You can imagine how many people roamed around the Harding property during the 1920 campaign. Yep. To maintain a sense of order, Marion police officers manned two Century Houses. One was beside the Press House and one was by the curb on Mount Vernon Avenue in front of the Harding's home. This is a re replica of one of the unique structures. So it was literally exactly what it says, a Century House, like Greenland House. 
1920, the recently widowed Isabel Freeland and her two daughters, Isabel and Eleanor, had a ringside seat for the front porch campaign next door, Eleanor 38. A local teacher wrote a series of articles which were published nationwide. Entitled The Girl Next Door, the series offered a lighthearted, colorful view of the campaign. Later in the 1920s, the Freelands moved away and the Harding Memorial Association purchased the home. The association had the house raised in the 1930s to provide buffer space for the Harding home, which had opened to the public in 1926. So, that's where, where it used to be. Okay, everyone, that is our visit to the Warren G. Harding house. Um, we hope that you guys liked it. So there's the house, there's the press house, and there's the Century Shack. And then behind it, is that library and museum.